Neuroimaging is really a hybrid field. It draws upon traditional disciplines from neurobiology to computer science to mathematics to physics to a whole variety of other related disciplines. So a question that we might ask in neuroimaging is what changes in the brain occur before the behavioral consequences of those brain changes emerge? In order to see that, we have to examine a number of different people over time. In order for us to better understand them, we have to apply a variety of algorithms to tease out that information that's in the data somewhere. We chose Sun because of the speed of the technology, because of the plan for future technologies, because of the company's stability, and because of the scientists that were associated with the company. The Laboratory of Neuroimaging, like most scientific entities these days that are funded by the federal government, has a fairly uh, serious push to open source. It's true for the code that we develop here. Uh, we give the code away. We believe as scientists that knowledge that's paid for by the American people should be shared with the American people. And having a partner that has an open source uh, philosophy with their operating system, I think, is a distinct advantage. It helps us that Solaris 10 is open source because it allows a community of open source developers to peruse the code, to look for ways to optimize the operating system. But a key factor here is that uh, Sun continues to heavily invest in improving how Solaris 10 performs, adding new features such as D-Trace. So there is a parallel effort in the company to improve the operating system. We embarked on a project uh, a little while ago to try and develop a interface, a software interface that was written in Java so that people could gain access to these resources. This is a system that graphically allows an unsophisticated user to manipulate the sequence of processing steps on our cluster system to perform the analysis utilizing data that may exist in our database in a way that they wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So they're harnessing these enormous resources with a rather simple Java-enabled graphical interface uh, that allows access to uh, uh, general scientists. Solaris 10 provides us with two specific advantages. First, Solaris 10 is free. Considering the large implementation of this cluster, uh, saving a few dollars per node actually amounts to tens of thousands of dollars in operating system costs. The second, uh, Solaris 10 is open source. So we have millions of open source developers assisting in improving the operating system and developing applications specific to the operating system. The past five years, the way the laboratory has done computation, we relied on highly proprietary technology. What we want to do moving forward, we wanted to use commodity equipment and open source software. And Sun, using AMD chips and commodity components, and Solaris 10, which is now open source, proved just that. We wanted to make sure that we could embark upon a close relationship scientifically and uh, technically with a group of individuals that would be around a long time. We wanted stability because we are an investigative group and uh, we're not a company and therefore we wanted to be able to have a solid relationship that would continue into the future. And Sun uh, fit that bill.